welcome to Ask the Educator, a podcast brought to you by Healthmark Industries. Are you a sterile processing technician or manager? Maybe you work in infection prevention or biomedical engineering. Whether you're a frontline tech, endoscopy tech, OR nurse, or surgical services administrator, you undoubtedly have influence in medical device processing at your facility. In each episode, we speak with experts from the Healthmark Clinical Affairs team, industry leaders, or special guests from the trenches to answer your questions and bring you relevant industry information, equipping you for excellence in medical device processing. My name is Kevin Anderson, and I will be your host. Now let's get started. Hey, everyone. This is Kevin Anderson. Welcome back to the Ask the Educator podcast. Uh, As always, I have my co-host with me, Adam Okada. Uh, Thanks for being with me again, Adam. And in this episode, we have as our special educator guest is Jahan Azizi, uh, Healthmark's very own. We are going to get into uh, a very important topic today in this podcast, all about automation and endoscope processing, and specifically AI when it comes to borescope inspection. So, To kind of lay the groundwork, Jahan, would you just kind of just quickly define enhanced visual inspection for us so we can kind of uh, get going on this? Probably, you know, for the past decade or so, we've been talking about if it's not clean, it cannot be sterilized. That's really one of the the major point of this visual inspection. And really at the base of it is visual inspection using your eyeball trying to see if the device is clean. There is no debris on it. Uh, Most of the IFU said that if you find uh, some kind of uh, stuff that is on this instrument, you need to wash it, clean it. For example, the duodenum uh, scope, the 190 Olympus duodenum scope said that inspect all the items. And then if you see any debris, uh, you need to repeat the steps to make sure that all the debris are clean. So that's really at the basis of it. What is verification? What can you do with your eyes? But we know that when it comes to really a little more deep dive into that, we cannot see a lot of things with our naked eyes. We need some kind of magnification, some kind of lighted magnification. Obviously, those work really good for the outside. But when we get to the devices such as endoscope, that they do have cannular lumen you really need something else, something more to find the breeze and the stuff or cleanliness inside the lumen and cannula of those, those devices. So we are the basic that is your device clean and ready to be sent for high level disinfection or sterilization. And I think in the old days, visual inspection was good enough, right? That was just, we just looked at it with our naked eye and we said, okay, that looks clean. Let's move it along to the next step. But we know now there's too much science and too many studies have been done. We know that's not good enough now. So we need these enhanced visual inspection methods, right? Microscopes, boroscopes, and the swing arm magnifiers, by the way, that most of us have on our workstations, those really are only about 2 to 2.25 times magnification. That's great. It's better than our naked eye, but it's usually still not enough to catch a lot of the defects that we're seeing. Uh, like the intuitive in their IFU, they specify 4X magnification because they know 2X doesn't see close enough to actually see some of the damage uh, that'll happen with some of these items. So, you know, I, lo- I love that uh, definition you gave uh, and about the Olympus where it says to visually inspect for debris, but how do you see inside without, say, a boroscope and things? So that we need tools like that uh, at our disposal to assist with those types of things. But can you talk a little bit about like standards and guidelines that also are telling us that we should be using a boroscope to inspect these things? I always like to look at is common sense. Does a common sense <laughs> allows you to do that? So, but uh, obviously we need some kind of uh, consent standard or guidance to do that. If today you look at really Food and Drug Administration Center for Disease, SGNA, AMI, AORN, they all have this processing, you said that a guidance based on really major quality improvement, quality assurance, and monitor of the process. So when I mean, we know that monitor the process, which, which all these talk about, is how do you do that? I mean, we, we need to look at, is it being clean? For example, ME ST91, 
that's the one that really dive in into inside this, which is one of the best practice, for example, for the endoscope reprocessing. And it talks about that you need to use some kind of, recommend some kind of boroscope to look into that, enhanced visualization, and obviously uh, high risk endoscope. You need to uh, look inside them a little more so they are free of debris. So it really all the organizations are talking about some kind of uh, inspection as part of the quality system. Yeah, and I think that we're seeing that more because now there's more evidence too. I mean, Ofsted has done uh, studies, as we know, and and shared how often flexible endoscopes in particular have been found to be either damaged or have residual debris in them. Uh, so the, the body of evidence supporting uh, borescope inspection is just mounting and it, and it continues to mount as the years go by. And so one of the things that is really challenging, I don't know if this is true, but I think I may have been one of the early adopters, if you will, with borescope technology and using it in endoscope reprocessing areas. Uh, but unfortunately, being an early adopter, I wasn't I hadn't had the opportunity to learn from everybody else's, you know, journeys to implementing this thing. Uh, so I quickly found out that people were having trouble uh, with interpreting what they were looking at. And you know what? I, a lot of times I couldn't really be the help that I thought I, I would be with that. Like we had to kind of figure it out. And, and a lot of times we were we were winging it and making errors on the side of safety. So a lot of endoscopes were going out uh, for repair and all of this sort of thing. Uh, so Kevin, yeah, Kevin, we could play SPD's favorite game, which is, is it rust or blood, right? That's the favorite game <laughs> that we play. Is this rust or blood? We don't know. That's exactly right. So it was really, uh, it was unnervingly challenging to to really implement this, this simple inspection step. At least in the beginning, it seemed very simple. But now we have some tools at our disposal, or at least they're starting to come out and they're it's starting to automate some of these things for us. So uh, can you kind of talk a little bit about that, Jahan? Like how how can automation assist in the implementation of a QMS when it comes to endoscope processing? Because this is where these tools can be really helpful, I think. Sure. Actually, just to expand on what uh, you were talking about and Adam mentioned is that so once we once people start deploying the flexible inspection scope first, uh, they had a lot of questions, what they are. And sometimes, for example, some of them reach out to uh, in Olympus and say that, what is right, what is not, what should we do with this? And uh, I don't know if you remember that, in October 21, uh, 2019, Olympus sent a communication to uh, to their customer and said that the use of boroscope obviously becoming more and more. And they gave some example of photos that what is what and what you need to look at that some things that normal and something are not. So yes, that's that's been an issue. And then the other one is that people that deploy the flexible inspection the scope, they couldn't really identify them. Or sometimes if you move your head to one side, you miss some of the spot. So what happened is that that became a more challenge and the timing, how long it takes to do that, who is the most experienced to do that. So, and then this is comes out to this, uh, artificial intelligence can be augment intelligence to help us to make our life a little easier. So th this uh, software that we are partnered with, we call it Watchdog Artificial Intelligence. What it does basically, it takes some of the burden away from the person that is inspecting and make, put the decision back, back on the decision maker. So what it does is automatically detect, label and counts all the defects in the inside of lumen. And then what it does, it tabulate them, counts them, and stores them and keep a record of it. And they are safely obviously stored in the cloud. That way you can look at them down the road. And another thing it does that it sends a report to the supervisor or manager and shows the 10, or if you can select as many of them, but 10, 10 of the worst picture. And they say that, for example, uh, you, you're and the scope had a gouge in it or it has some damages in it, what do you want to do with it? So that way, at least it makes it easier for the facility or the hospital to move forward and do that. The other thing is that it's really, it's faster than, it's about four and a half times faster than human, human can interpret and see it. So it's about 
detects debris in one thirty of a second. So I identify scratches, peeling, crimps, droplet, and the stains, and put them on the site and send a report of that to the management. So it is, it's amazing that when you look at that, and you don't have to look at it, what it does. If you're busy, you can just push it through as uh, as a speed that you want. And then the report it comes out to the management and you by the serial number, then you can go back and look at it to see if there's anything wrong with that. We were in one particular hospital. It, the interesting part was that the endo was obviously clean and processed the endoscope, but the clinical or biomedical engineering were the one that responsible for sending these endoscope for repair. So the manager at uh, the hospital said that we, uh, the SPD said that we really don't want, not worry about the reports, send all those to the biomed, and that they're, they're the one that make the decision. So what it does when the report goes to them, they can look at the report, they can recall the video to see what's wrong with this uh, endoscope, and then they can send it to the manufacturer or third party, whoever does the repair, and then come back with the repair. So really that is the power of artificial intelligence. Some people call it, in this case, augmented intelligence to help the facilities, the hospital to make their job easier. Yeah, John, and what I love about uh, what you were talking about with, uh, you know, this enhanced inspection and and the augmented uh, thing is it's constantly learning, right? So it's not just that it's identifying things that we would have difficulty identifying just with our naked eye. Again, like Kevin said, sometimes that borescope passes through and we're like, that doesn't look quite right, but I'm not exactly sure what it is. And that's where we need that help, right? And it's it's helping us to interpret what's wrong. And it's constantly learning and being able to identify these things for us. And that's really what I think is exciting about this technology that's coming. Do you have any like final thoughts or takeaways on the watchdog software, the future of of how this or where it's going to go and how it's going to help us? Well, I think is as you indicate, it's a powerful tool. So that's the first thing it is. And just looking at that, taking the burden away from the frontline people and getting the management involved or who was re- required to do that, that's I think is is important. We're hoping that this tool allowed people to use more and more. As we know, we go to some of the hospital, they have purchased several inspection, flexible inspection scope, but they're not using them as much because it's time consuming. What am I looking at? So I th- believe this is gonna answer those questions and allow the user to actually use those flexible inspection scope and identify uh, dirty and damaged uh, endoscope and process them and move forward. Yeah, I'm glad, Jahan, that you mentioned the time involved. It's definitely one of the major kickbacks that I experienced was just how how long uh, it can take. And for those people out there who are not yet familiar with Watchdog, uh, I have seen it in action. And you can literally just push the borescope down there, uh, you know, as fast as it will handle uh, without breaking it. And you're going to get a a total report out of what was found in there. Like it seems like it would be way too fast, uh, but the, uh, the watchdog software catches it. And I see that, you know, that timing component being really important. And I also see, you know, the feedback. So say if I'm clean, if I'm the one cleaning, I'm learning all the time, whether or not my cleaning is being effective or say I target education towards, the operating room staff or procedural room staff to, you know, hey, take it easier on that $30,000 pieces of equipment there that's in your hands all day. And maybe we target education towards them. And hopefully uh, over time, we start to see those damages and the defects kind of decrease over time. And that AI system that's counting and tracking those for us will help show that. So I think that watchdog software is pretty slick. I hope that uh, uh, people uh, reach out, take a look at it. Uh, Jahan, thank you for being a guest uh, uh, again on the podcast and and sharing uh, your expertise about this. I think it's going to be a really great tool for people out there. Great. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All opinions expressed on this show are those of the presenters. Before using any medical device, it is important to review the device manufacturer's instructions for use.